for question number one. According to the NCAA's enforcement staff at the University of Oregon, there are there were three underlying major violations coupled with failure to monitor violations involving the head coach and the athletics department. Given this, should the NFL work with the NCAA and consider some sort of penalty against Chip Kelly, former head coach of Oregon? Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, disagree with that and say that they shouldn't punish him. Um, Oregon called upon, upon themselves that this was their violation, and they made it uh, known that these are the these are the people that are breaking rules. And the NCAA didn't do this. Oregon called it upon themselves, and then proposed their own punishments that should be instituted. So for that reason, they're calling it down to themselves as a school and as an organization that this is their program's fault. That it's not just Chip Kelly's. Um, also, back to what Chris was saying about the talent scout. Um, they paid him twenty-five thousand dollars to uh, give him give the school reports on uh, players and how well they were doing. And uh, the rule is that you are only allowed to receive written and um, like email reports, but you cannot receive oral reports about these players. And they received oral reports, which is considered a major infraction. But looking at it, they're getting the exact same information. So I don't know why this would stem up so badly and punish Chip Kelly, who's moving ahead in his life and going to the Eagles when, in reality, it's an Oregon problem. We're going to move on. Um, by yourself, the IOC's decision to ban all Indian athletes and Indian officials from Olympic competition and Olympic proceedings. What's this? Um, uh, I'm going to buy it, too. Uh, India, as they said before, had this whole um, grace period where they got warned for two months about what they were doing, and they tainted these elections. and. Um, really went about it the wrong way, so they kind of need to rethink what they're doing as a whole. Um, India hasn't really been a prevalent uh, country in a lot of the Olympic athletics, so maybe this will be like a warning call for them to um, bring it back and kind of focus on what they need to do as a country. Uh, their athletes are still competing, so they're still getting better, but maybe this will this will improve their um, Olympic committee and help them uh, become a bigger impact on the uh, World Olympics. Uh, we're going to move on. We're going to start with Rob for this one. Um, Adam Scott recently won the Masters after an incredible putt on the tenth hole, which an anchored putter uh, with an anchored putter. Do you believe that these putters should be allowed in professional golf? Um, I think Bernard Longer, when he won both of those Masters, had a short putter, and now he switched to the long putter. So I think that shows just exactly why it shouldn't be allowed because it's already changing the scope of the game. Um, Adam Scott was a very good player in his. Um, in his uh, past career, but recently when he switched to the long putter, he won the Players' Championship and came in second at the British Open, and now he won the Masters. Um, he just didn't perform as well when he had a regular, when a short putter. Um, players in the past, such as Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, and Matt Kuchar, who have never been uh, bad putters, decided to switch to the long putter just to try it out, and it helped improve their game for a short time. I think that shows how impactful this is and how it should be banned, because Players like that shouldn't have to change their style of putting unless it's uh, improving their game in some way.